Hey guys, and welcome to the new Let's Play project. Let's play Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX. I've decided, you know what, people have been asking for an actual Zelda game for quite a while now, and let's actually do a real one. Let's do the one that started me off in the series, Link's Awakening. But yeah, Link's Awakening DX was my very first real z er, yeah, it was my first Zelda game. Technically, I did play, like, the original Zelda on the NES because my brother owned it, but I could never get into that game. But Link's Awakening, this was the first one that I got for myself, well, as a birthday present. And I played it all the way through. This game has a very special place in my heart, so let's do it. Let's get started. Uh, we'll just go with Link for the file name. Oh, there's another thing I should show off. Uh, there is a little Easter egg if you type in Zelda as your file name. I think it has to be in all capital. That's... That's not how you spell Zelda. Whoops. Whoops. Uh, let me do that again. There we go. But yeah, get a little remix if you uh, name a file after Zelda. But we're not going with that file. Or Zida. Or sorry, Zidla. We're going with our main file. Oh, uh, but yeah, this game brings back so many memories. Also, this is Marin. We're gonna get to know Marin very well during this game. Also, I find it kind of funny that the first Zelda game I ever played was the one that didn't have Zelda in it. But yeah, this is Colant Island. Let's see what's inside her drawer. I like how that's the very first thing that Link does when he gets up. You know, instead of talking to the person who saved him. I'm gonna rummage through her stuff. But yeah, this Zelda game is very... whimsical compared to other Zelda games. It has a definite sense of humor. But yeah, sounds like a bunch of stuff washed up on the shore. We should probably go check that out later. And this is Karen. Also, he has our shield. Our very first item in the game. Yeah, I think this was the first this was the first Zelda game where you had to actually actively have your shield equipped to use it. In every other game, uh, basically it was just an automatic blocking item. In this game though, we actually have to hold down a button to have it used. Alright. But yeah, let's get out of here. Oops. Also, yeah, we should probably make sure we watch out for monsters. We don't actually have a way of dealing with them other than our shield right now. Oh, actually, there's also one more thing I want to check. Okay, never mind. They fixed that glitch. I remember in the black and white version, which I also owned, because for some reason as a kid, I thought there was a be there would be a big difference between the DX version and the original. I played them both all the way through, but still. So I did get the original version as, like, a different present for a different year, but that's beside the point. But in the original, I remember that if you looked at the map after you got your shield, you would be, like, all the way in the corner of the map for some reason. I was a silly kid, okay? I think I actually- No, it wasn't a gift, the original. I saved up my money to buy it. I kind of felt dumb for getting it, but you know what? We were all kids once. Anyways, before we explore the village, I do want to go down to the beach uh, first. Also, yep, saving method was kind of weird in this game. Since there weren't a lot of buttons, we had to hold down A, B, start, and select to access the save menu. I'm not going to do it right now, but... But yeah, I definitely remember these two kids, because even after talking to them, I didn't really figure out how to save properly for a while. Anyways, so the beach is all the way down south. We do want to be careful, because like I said, we do have our shield, which is actually pretty powerful in this game. Also, we gotta get rid of these, uh, Gordos. I think they're supposed- I forget what they're actually called in-game, but they're Gordos from Kirby. Anyways, we want to go down south of here. Oh, actually no, that blocked it. There it is. There's our sword. Our weirdly see-through sword. I don't remember it being see-through. That's just a weird quirk of the Game Boy color power, but still. Okay, listen, that wasn't my fault. Our ship blew up and we ended up here. We had nothing to do with the monsters. Or not. 
So yeah, in order to get off this island, we need to wake the windfish. And sounds like we have to head to the forest, but we're gonna do that later. But first things first, let me see if I can actually pull this off. If I can grab it just far enough to the left... I forget if this works in this version of the game. Also, yeah, we have our name engraved on our sword. Oh, and with our sword, the main theme actually kicks in. No, it's not in this version of the game. I think in the original version, if you stood uh, far enough to the left, you can actually take out this Gordo over here. Oh, no, I remember why that is. It's because I always came in from the left, so I pushed the Gordo n into the path of the sword. Okay. But yep, we have our sword now. Uh, now we can finally take care of enemies. Anyways, let's start heading back to the village. Oops. Oh, I already took damage. <laughs> Whoops. But yeah, sword play. Pretty simple. Hit A or whatever button you have uh, the sword equipped to, to attack, and hold it down to charge up a charge attack. Sorry, spin attack. Spin attacks actually do twice the amount of damage, so I tend to use those more often than not. Hi, monkey! You're not very friendly, are you? Actually, let's uh, take a look around the area while we're here. Oh, oh, I want to grab that. Oh, well. Alright, sounds like we can't get through here quite yet, but we'll come back later once we have a way to get rid of those rocks. Uh, down here is a blank beach. We'll be here later, too. Yeah, there's not much we can actually do down here yet, so let's just start heading back. We could take a look in here. There's an alligator man living here. His name is Sale, I think. Yeah, yeah, his name is Sale. And his hobby is collecting rare and unusual canned food. That's... quite a hobby. Got anything good in here? No. Yeah, unfortunately there's never going to be any good in these uh, drawers. Whoops, let me check that again. Let's start hanging back. I do like how his bed is in like a little pool of water. It's a nice little touch. But yeah, it's not that far of a walk. I do want to make sure I grab as much money as possible though. Money is pretty important early on if we want to afford some items. Also, yeah, unlike Gordos from Kirby, we can actually get rid of the uh, monsters in this game. Alright, up we go. Actually, before we head back, I do want to make a quick pit stop. Just to- oh, oh, there was our first Guardian Acorn. Well, it doesn't matter, we don't really need it right now. Uh, holes here we can't get uh, over quite yet, but we can just go quite- we can't go- uh, we can go around. But I think Guardian Acorns spawn- oh, also that can happen. I think Guardian Acorns spawn like every... three enemies you kill? Anyways, over here. Tail Keyhole, we'll keep it- we'll remember this for later. But yeah, I think like every- Oh, I forget exactly how- I know there's a formula to it to, like, determine if a Guardian Acorn spawns or not. I think it's after you kill a couple of enemies after starting the game, one will spawn. It's not really that important, honestly. Guardian Acorns are kind of annoying. Oops. Meant to block that. Because they kind of just stop the action for a second. Also, we didn't look in here yet, did we? I was kind of so focused on getting my sword, I didn't take the time to explore. But yeah, this is the library. Fun with bombs. That sounds like something we should probably not read. But yeah, this is basically uh, all the tutorial stuff. We don't really need to worry about any of these books. Also, that book up there is new to- or not new. Okay. Uh, the book up there- I was gonna try hanging it with my sword, but never mind. Basically, the book up there is new to the DX version for uh, the color dungeon. We'll get to it later once we have a way to actually get it down. But yeah, now that we have a sword, we can do more things in the village. I'm not gonna head up to, uh... I'm not gonna head over there to the woods quite yet. It's a little bit mysterious. I do want to explore the dungeon, or the dungeon, the town a bit more though. So, down here, I think we can get our first piece of heart, can't we? Yep, there it is. Yeah, it's actually been like years since I last played this game, so I'm kind of rusty in a lot of the like little hidden items. Hopefully I can find them all. I think I remember where at least some of the more tricky ones are hiding. Hi there! Also, yeah, there's a chain chomp in town. It's friendly-ish. It can't hurt me, so that's all that's important.
Do chain chomps have fur? Huh. You know what? It doesn't matter. Let's just head inside this little doghouse over here. Where this one is apparently sentient. Alright, keep it. Just remember that for later. Also, cuckoos are in this game. This is a horrible idea. Don't do this. This is kind of a ride passage for any new Zelda player. So yeah, the very first time I did this, I was kind of surprised at what happened. I was kind of surprised at what happened. There it is. Oh, I didn't stay long enough for it to actually do a thing. Basically, if you attack these guys too much, they'll summon a giant flock of chickens that'll kill you until you leave the screen. Yeah, the first time I did that, I was kind of surprised. Okay. Well, someone's shy. Yeah, oh, I completely forgot about the phones. Yeah, like I said, this Zelda game is kind of a bit wacky and different than other Zelda games in terms of tone. Because, yeah, around the island you can find these little phone booths. And if you call, you can talk to Old Man Uriah. And he'll give you, like, hints of uh, what you could do next. Alright, so let's see, what else have we not seen yet? Oh, the shop. Oh, do I have enough money, actually? No, I only have six rupees. Never mind. We'll go check out the shop later. Actually, that's not the shop. That's the uh, crane game. I forget, how much uh, How much do I need to actually play it? I only need to really play it once to get the... Well, to get what's pretty obvious what we need to get. It's ten rupees. Okay, I don't have enough money yet. I'll come back later. Yes, you can. All of these kids just know how to break the fourth wall, but they have no idea why they're doing it. Actually, let me see if I can just get 10 rupees, of, like, right now. No, not yet. Okay. Uh, is there any more hidden in the grass here? Nope. Fortunately, there's this giant field of grass right here. Actually, I think there's also a, uh, let me see. There it is. There's our first secret seashell. We need 20 of those if we want to get, uh, basically we can unlock something at 20. There's actually 26 in the game because some are permanently missable, but it shouldn't be too hard to get them all. But actually, no. It shouldn't be too hard to get enough. Anyways, we have enough money now. Let's go play the trendy game. Oh, ow. Yeah, unlike the cuckoos, uh, the dog there will just straight up attack you if you hit it. But yeah, now that we have enough to play, let me see if I can do this without screwing up. It's a bit on the weird side in terms of how it controls. Basically, what we want is that weird Yoshi doll in the middle. So let's just line it up. And I'm going to wait for these ones to pass so I don't actually... Actually, wait. I forget if it grabs the first thing it hits. I don't think it does. But yeah, we want the Yoshi doll. That worked, right? Or is that too low? Oh no, we got it. Perfect. Because uh, Link's Awakening was the first game to have a trading side quest. And it all starts with this Yoshi doll. I want to see if I can get the trading side quest done as quickly as possible because the reward you get from it is actually pretty good. When did this game come out again? Late 90s? Yeah, I guess Yoshi was showing up in a lot of games back then. Actually, he's starting to show up in more games now, too. Alright, well, we're back to full health. Let's take... Let's... Let's take... Let's keep taking a look around. And yeah, I'm just gonna be cutting grass as I go just to make some extra money on the side. Over here is the actual shop. Eventually, I do want to buy the shovel. We could steal it, but the thing is, I actually tr want to try to get through this game without stealing for once. Because if you steal something, your name gets changed to Thief permanently, and I kind of don't want that. But yeah, I'm going to see if I can avoid stealing for now. I might show it off later, but I won't save that time. 
What else is around here? There's a little shrine over here we can't access because there are some pretty heavy rocks. Alright, we'll come back to the- yeah, there's a lot of things blocked off by rocks. That is actually a- man, I guess that's a pretty good piece of advice. The thought process of that one is basically if you go inside an area and you die, you'll just spawn at that uh, area you just entered. So like if you go inside a house and you die and then come back out, if you die you'll just spawn back at the entrance of that house. So yeah, that's a pretty good piece of advice I guess. Anyways, up here... Well... Hi, Papa. And yeah, he'll be lost in the hills later. We'll have to keep an eye out for him. Foreshadowing. I'm not even sure if that's even foreshadowing. That's just kind of blood force trauma-ing of uh, future events. But yeah, since we have the Yoshi doll... She wants it, so might as well give it to her. And as a reward, we get a bow. But yeah, this is the trading side quest, and it's going to be going on for most of the game. We can actually go continue it right now. So yeah, now that we have the bow... Remember that one little chain chomp that won, like, accessories? Let's go give it to her. Also, hi, Marin. But yeah, Ballad of the Windfish. That's kind of the signature song of this game. We'll keep that in mind. But yeah, that's pretty much the entirety of the village. Because I don't think there's any... Oh no, there is one more thing we can sh I can uh, do right now. Actually, can I do it right now? I don't think I have enough money. I think it costs 10 rupees to do this. Because over here, we can do a little fishing mini game. Yeah, it's 10 rupees. Okay, I need one more. Listen, Mr. Fishman, I can't afford your, uh, fish. Let me go see if I can just scrounge up a rupee real quick. Let's try to do this without hitting the dog. I think it's supposed to be a dog. It kind of looks more like a wolf to me, to be honest. Or not a wolf, a fox to me. There it is. Alright, let's do this. Hopefully I can do this the first, uh, time going through. If not, I'll come back and do it later. Alright, let's fish. So we gotta aim and then uh, just push a button rapidly to reel in. So what I want is that fish that's like right below us, actually. So let me see if I can do this. Oh no, too much. No, do not. Oh. Fine, I'll catch it. But yeah, I need to remember how to actually do this. Oh, okay, five rupees. Man. I don't have the money, but yeah, I'll come back here once I actually have more rupees to spend. For now, though, let's get out of here. So we did get the uh, bow, so let's go trade that real quick. Hi there! That seems like a terrible deal, but sure. Well, we got the can of dog food. Great. It's full of juicy beef. Well, it's a canned good. Sale did say he was interested in uh, collecting weird canned goods, so let's see if he'll like a big can of dog food. So all we gotta do is head right back down here. Out of my way. Alright, but yeah, now that we have the can of dog food, we can go trade in over here. Alright, oh god. Oh, oh god, okay, yeah, just take it. I don't want to piss out a giant crocodile, man. And there it goes. I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to eat the can. Well, in return we get bananas. We're gonna be holding on to those bananas for quite a while. That was actually a really good deal. Alright, let's get out of here. 
So yeah, that's pretty much everything we can uh, see down here, I believe. Oh, I guess I haven't actually looked down in this corner over there. Whoops, that was weird. Recording kind of freaked out there for a second when I went to the map. But yeah, we, oops, we haven't looked down here yet that much. Also, I'm taking way too much damage than I would like. I want to see if I can actually complete the map. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Not much to see here. Alright, so yeah, we've explored everything we can. Let's start heading towards that mysterious forest. Actually, you know what? I think I'm just getting the episode here. We actually did quite a bit in this episode. A lot more than I actually thought we- Oh! Piece of power! We got a piece of power. Basically, for I think 30 seconds, all of our attacks are going to do double damage, which would be helpful if I didn't just, you know, go to the village where there's no combat. Oh well. But yeah, piece of power are more uh, useful than guardian acorns, to be honest. But now that we have a sword, we can head over here into the mysterious forest. Hi, Mr. Owl. Sorry, mysterious wood. But yep, we can't leave. We can't even swim in the ocean, surprisingly. I remember that was the first thing I did as a kid when I got the flippers. Just try to just swim out, but no, won't even let you into the ocean. But yep, basically we need to go to the first dungeon by finding the key in the uh, forest here. But I think we'll do that next time. So, next time on Let's Play Link's Awakening DX, we're going to explore the forest a bit. So, till then.